Gary Flomenhoft with the Gund Institute, and we're talking about Vermont homegrown power, and today we're going to talk about hydropower. Vermont was born on hydro. Vermont used to get over 90% of its electricity from in-state hydro. The Department of Energy in 2006 came up with about 400 megawatts of environmentally sound hydro that could be developed in the state. That's about half of the base load of the state. The base load is 7, 800 megawatts and the peak load is about 1,100. But even if it's half of that, even if it's, you know, 200 megawatts, that's, you know, 20% of our power. We're we're not sending our money out of state, we're sending it to our neighbors, which would be great. This site, like a lot of others in Vermont, is it's not a very big hydro site. We use what we can here, locally. Just hydro alone can supply power for about 4,000 homes. A lot of it will go uh, across the river and is put into the statewide grid. My projects are licenses. I just got the first license that was issued in the state of Vermont for a new riverine hydro project in 24 years. And those will produce about enough power for 3,000 U.S. households, about 6,000 European households, about 40,000 you know, African households. Um, so quite a bit of power. We don't even know what power is. technology for these hydros out here is late 1800s, early 1900s, and they're still running. Almost 100 years later, you have a 9-foot diameter pipe that runs down from the back side of the dam to supply water. Water goes into the turbine casing. You have two sets of turbine blading, one at each end of that horizontal casing. The water turns those, which is connected by a 9-inch steel shaft that runs through the hydro all the way through the generator. And all the generator is, it's almost like two sets, two coils of wire. Inside these generators, uh, you have uh, what you call a rotor. You have a big wheel. On the outside of that wheel, you have 24 big electromagnets. They weigh about 350 pounds a piece. All that is is this big chunk of steel with copper coils wrapped around it until it's gone through all 24. That line comes back out. You put direct current through that line. It goes through all of those magnets and comes back out. What that does is intensify the magnetic field around that chunk of steel. You have a second coil of wire. It's a stationary coil of wire. And as those magnets, when they're turning, goes by that stationary coil of wire in a certain place on that stationary coil of wire, it induces electrons to flow out of that stationary coil of wire. Magnetic force, that's what electricity is. And it runs out of here, out through the poles and wires. So why isn't there more hydro? Come on. You've got me. <laughs> <laughs> there should be more hydro. It's such a resource. It's so regulated. Uh, it's, it's difficult to uh, expand. The regulatory process is lengthy, expensive. What I'm really advocating is what I call a 1040 EZ form for hydro, because there's a lot of opportunity, but it's not going to be done without that EZ form. And we can do it. We know, and the state has a great record of environmentally sound hydro with very, very uh, responsible operators who really care about the rivers and the water quality can't change the temperature, any of that. We do that by one degree, we're out of business. We built parks that we maintain, boat launches, fish population has exploded here. The water quality is much, much better than it used to be. And that was something we wanted to do, in essence, on our own. It wasn't mandated. So you feel like a river steward? Oh yeah, you have to. With hydro, it's nice because you don't put anything in, and in essence, you really don't take anything out. You're just using the falling water to turn turbine blades, to turn a generator, to make electricity. 